In this video, we'll consider the following very important combination. X transpose A Y, where X and Y are elements of Rn, and we'll be thinking of them here as single column matrices. Now this is a very important combination indeed, and we will be encountering it all the time later in the course. In this video, we'll consider two separate examples, one with specific numbers, just to practice working with these kinds of products, and then one with letters instead of numbers, so that we're able to summarize what products like this end up being. So let's start with this example. You should probably pause the video and figure out this product on your own, and then come back and check with us. Just note that you can carry out this double product in a number of ways, you could, in two different ways rather. You could multiply these two matrices first, and then multiply the result by this matrix on the left, or these matrices first and then by this matrix on the right. Thank goodness we have associativity. I'm going to multiply these two matrices first, but you can do it the other way. So here's the intermediate result. One, oops, one, two, multiplying, uh, let's see, two, five, and so the result is 11. So here is the important thing to realize, that the outcome of this product is always a one by one matrix. So it would have been a little bit more proper to actually put square parentheses around it because the result is not a number, it's technically a one by one matrix. But we'll routinely identify one by one matrices with simple numbers and it's okay to write the answer like this as long as you remember the formalism of matrix multiplication, that this is a one by one matrix. But a one by one matrix has only one piece of information in it, it is its single entry, so we can also think of it as a number. Okay, so it is just a number, and whether you had done it this way or this way, by associativity, you would have gotten 11. But this was just one specific example, and it's not allowing us to see the structure of what's going on. So in order to see the structure of what's going on, I invite you to now carry out this product. And you will notice, of course, there's nothing to notice, it's the same thing, the result will be a single number. It will be a one by one matrix. Of course, it will, when, it, when we're working with it symbolically, it will appear as a sum of four terms. The advantage of working with numbers is that if you have a sum of several numbers, it collapses into a single number. Well, that won't happen here. You will still have four terms, but it's four terms in a sum. That's the important thing to realize, that the answer is still just a single number, but that single number will be a sum of four separate terms. So go ahead, pause the video, figure out what that sum is, and then organize it as best you can. Whatever you think is the most attractive way to sort the terms, do it like that. Meanwhile, I'll do it on my own and I actually know what the answer looks like, so I will be able to skip this intermediate step. But because you don't yet know what the answer looks like, you have to perform this intermediate step. And trust me, be patient. This example, despite its outward innocence, is actually a little bit time consuming. So it's okay if this takes you five or 10 minutes. The important thing is to get it right. So go ahead, pause the video, come back and check with us. Meanwhile, I'll write down the answer. And then, while you're at it, try to summarize your answer with words. That's just as important here as getting the right answer. Here I go. Okay, here we go. Here is that answer. Once again, it's just a single number. So you have to be very careful. So I wrote plus and then dot, 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 just so that you see that it carries over and then dot, dot, dot here to the next line. This is just all one number. This is not a two by two matrix or anything like that. It's just a number that's the sum of four terms. And there we go. The interesting thing here is that you can very easily summarize what's going on here with words. And it is this interpretation with words that's very important and will come in quite handy later on. And here is that interpretation. 
you will have the sum of as many terms as there are entries in this matrix. To each entry in the matrix there will correspond a term and each one of those terms will have one of the x's and one of the y's, one of the entries of the x vector and one of the entries of the y vector. Now what entries? Well very easy to determine. You simply look at the numbers, at the indices of this entry, of the entry from the matrix, right? It is its row and column. And whatever row it is, so the first index, that's the x that it'll extract from the vector x. And whatever the column of the, of the entry is, that's the entry that it will extract from the vector y. So it's a11, x1, y1, a12, x1, y2, a21, x2, y1, and finally plus a22, x2, y2. So this insight immediately tells us what would happen if this wasn't just a two by two matrix, but an arbitrary n by n or even a rectangular matrix. The answer would have as many terms as there are entries in the matrix. Corresponding to each entry in the matrix, there will be a term in the sum that will feature that entry of the matrix and, will, and it will pull out the entry from the vector x that corresponds to the first index and the entry from the vector y that corresponds to the second index. The one thing that I will mention that perhaps I should have mentioned earlier is how I numbered the entries. We have never done this before uh, as far as I can remember where we represented a big matrix by indexed values. So the way I index the values here is that the first index indeed denotes the row. So you will see that in this first row, the first index is one. In the second row, the first index is two. And the second index denotes the column. This is a very standard way to enumerate entries of the matrix. So you will see that in the first column, the second entry is always one. And in the second column, the second entry is always two. So if you enumerate the entries of the matrix like that, the result of this product will be the sum of as many terms as there are entries in the matrix, and each term will have a single entry of the matrix, and the x that corresponds to the row of that entry, and the element of y that corresponds to the column of that entry. There you go, a very important combination that we will work with a lot later on in the course.